Blessed be the name of the Lord. I welcome us to the grace for today broadcast. Live from Seed of Life Television. Shall we pray together? Father, we thank you for the grace you are giving unto us once again. For us to interact through your word. The Bible says, sanctify them with the truth. Your word is the truth. You have, a, you have exalted your word above you. Father, we heart that today your word will be exalted in our lives in the name of Jesus. Let your word minister grace to everyone that will hear in the name of Jesus. And let your name be be glorified. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Our topic for today is loving your wife unconditionally. Loving your wife unconditionally. And our text is taken from the book of Ephesians chapter 5, verses 25 to 33. Ephesians 5, 25 to 33. I want to read from here. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify her having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, that he might present to himself the church in all her glory, having no spot or wrinkle or any sort of thing, but that she should be holy and blameless. So husbands ought also to love their own wife as their own bodies. He who loves his own wife loves himself. For no one ever ate his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ also does to the church, because we are members of his body. For this cause, a man shall leave his father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a mystery, which is great, but I am speaking with reference to Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let each individual among you also love his own wife, even as himself, and let the wife see to it that she respect her husband. As I said earlier on, our topic is loving your wife unconditionally. Loving your wife unconditionally. Uh, God is interested in our relationship because a healthy relationship is the bedrock of every society. And this family is the smallest unit of relationship. So when family, which is the smallest unit, get it right, it is a pointer to a healthy society. And that's why God wants us to get it right at the family level. In the book of Ephesians that we have read, we see Paul writing to the Ephesians church on different level of relationship. He started with husband and wife in chapter 5. In chapter 6, he wrote about parents and children. And later about masters and slaves. But our focus today is on husband and wife relationship. And we are going to make emphasis on the role of the husband. The role of the husband. Before we go there, I want to know that marriage is established to meet certain needs. Marriage is established to meet certain needs. And these are the needs. The first one is emotional need. Of course, you know that marriage is established to kill loneliness. As God said, it is not good for a man to be alone. Also, marriage is established to meet social need. That is for procreation. When husband and wife begin to bear children according to the plan of God, uh, the society is increasing and the purpose of God is, this, is being established in the society. Also, marriage is established to meet 
physical need, that is for pleasure between husband and wife, for pleasure between marriage couple. Then marriage is established to meet spiritual need. And this is what most of us do not know. Marriage is established to define the kind of relationship that exists between Christ and the church. And as we have read from here, that is why God established marriage. And this fourth purpose can never be achieved until the husband loves the wife unconditionally. Because Christ loves the church unconditionally. So the type of love God wants to exist in a home is the type of love that exists between him and the church. And it is the duty of the husband to love the wife unconditionally. So if the wife must love his wife unconditionally, it must have the following characteristics. Number one, the love must be sacrificial. The love must be sacrificial. If you check that verse 25b, that would say Christ gave himself for the church. So Christ sacrificed himself for the church. So it is expected that husband sacrifice himself to love his wife when it is convenient and when it is not convenient. That is the type of love God ex expects from a husband towards his life. Not only that it must be sacrificial, it must be sanctifying. Verses 26 and 27 tell us that, that, that he might sanctify her having cleansed her by the washing of the water, by the word, that he might present him to himself a church in all her glory. So Jesus gave himself for the church to sanctify the church. So husband must give himself to his wife to sanctify her. Husband is not a perfect material. The wife is expected to love her in such a way to sanctify her. That is, if there be any fault in the life of the wife, the husband must be committed in love to see that those faults are corrected. And that is why Christ continues to love the church. Even despite the church imperfection, Christ continues. So the same thing husband must do to the wife in order to show that he actually loves his wife. Um, continue. Not only sacrificial, not only sanctifying, it must be sincere. Look at verse 38. That means they must love their own wife as their own body. The love must be sincere. There must be sincerity in the love between husband and wife. There should be no iota of darkness. There should be nothing that, oh, there is this thing I cannot open up to my wife about it. I don't want my wife to know this thing. The love between husband and wife must be sincere. Husband must allow the wife to know the salary he collects. In fact, I've seen a case that husband is working in a place and the, the wife does not know where the husband works. The wife does not know the, the, the salary of the husband. The wife does not know the, the friend of the husband. That is not sincerity. If there is sincerity, the wife must know your salary. The, my, the wife must know where you work. The wife must know, must know, must know your friend. That is where sincerity comes to. I said the love must be sacrificial, must be sanctifying, must be, must be sincere. Then it must also be sympathetic. Look at that verse 39. Verse 39 read, For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes. That is sympathetic. You do it, you are considerate. The husband must be considerate in his love for the wife. He must not always want to have his weight as the head. No, it's the head. But he must be sympathetic in his love because there are times that the wife may not be available to meet all his needs. He must be considerate. He must be sympathetic. I've said it must be sacrificial. It must be sanctifying. It must be sincere. It must be sympathetic. And lastly, it must be satisfying. Verses 30 to 31 tells us that for this cause a man shall leave his 
father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Now, if you are going to leave something for someone, you must be committed to it. Your parents are very important in your life. Your parents, they are the vehicle through which God brought you to this world. So if you are going to leave your parents for something, you must be committed to that thing. So your love must be committed to satisfy your wife. So if husband will love his wife unconditionally, it must be sacrificial, it must be sanctifying, it must be sincere, it must be sympathetic, it must be satisfying. Husband as the head has the tendency to be selfish because it's the head. But this can be cured when the husband loves the wife unconditionally. Marriage is much in heaven, but it is made on earth. It can be what God wanted to be when husband loves the wife unconditionally. I pray for you, husband, out there that the grace to love your wife. God will that with you. And daily. Examine your love, your wife, based on all these points that we have, we have, we have examined. And as we, uh, and as we do that, the Lord will make your home to become heaven on heart in the name of Jesus. Let us pray together. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word that you have sent to us today. You have addressed your word to the husband in the house and the husband in the making. How they can love their wife unconditionally. I pray, O oh God, as men that are insincere in their love, you will have mercy on them and you will extend your love to them so that they will be able to display safe to their wife unconditionally in the name of Jesus. You are coming for a glorious church. A family must be glorious. Help our family so that we pattern our family after the altar of Christ to the church in the name of Jesus. So that when you come, our family will not be left behind. Thank you for the answer prayer. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. I thank you for listening today. I know that God, God has blessed you by today's broadcast. Let us tune in next time to enjoy God. God bless you. Bye.